हेलो व्यूअर्स इफ यू रिकॉल इन माई लास्ट वीडियो आई शोड यू अ क्लिनिकल प्रजेंटेशन ऑफ अ केस ऑफ अ ट्यूबर ट्यूबकुलर मैनिजाइटिस हु हैड नॉट रिगेन द फुल कॉन्शियसनेस इन स्पाइट ऑफ आर गिविंग एंटी ट्यूबकुलर थेरेपी अलॉन्ग विथ स्टीरोड्स एंड आई प्रोमिस टू यू दैट इन सच केसेज सम टाइम यू मे हैव टू एड सर्जिकल मैनेजमेंट एंड एज आई टोल्ड यू अर्लियर आई एम टूडे विद माई क्लोज फ्रेंड डॉक्टर राकेश दुआ हु इज अ सीनियर कंसल्टेंट एंड एच ओ डी ऑफ द न्यूरो सर्जरी डिपार्टमेंट एट फोर्टिस हॉस्पिटल शालीमर पार सो आई रिक्वेस्टेड हिम एंड टूडे ही विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट सर्जिकल मैनेजमेंट वॉट आर द इंडिकेशन वॉट यू नीड टू डू सर्जिकली बिकॉज दिस इज वन ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन यू विल ऑल्सो एनकाउंटर इन योर प्रैक्टिस दैट चिल्ड्रन एफ टी बी एम समटाइम्स डू नॉट इम्प्रूव इन स्पाइट ऑफ योर गिविंग ADT along with steroids so may i welcome dr rakesh dua from fortis hospital to talk briefly about surgical management which you ought to know in your exam because this is very commonly during the exams these are asked so he'll pertinently talk about the surgical management for from the post graduate examination point of view thank you very much action hello everyone uh, first of all i thank dr sunil gombar for giving me this opportunity to talk to you all about the surgical management in cases of hydrocephalus uh, tubercular meningitis with hydrocephalus so uh, first of all uh, not only hydrocephalus uh, there are many complications related to cranium and spine which may need surgical intervention uh, one of them of course is hydrocephalus uh, other complications uh, which can happen in these patient is tuberculoma which may increase in size cause a mass effect which may require intervention then there are various other complications like infarct hemorrhages uh, seizures then we have hyponatremia is a very common complication which uh, dr gombar is uh, looking after day in and day out then uh, uh, we have certain spinal complications like Uh, myeloid radiculopathy tuberculomas in the spine so these are all various complications but uh, we will be discussing about this particular case which dr gombar has uh, examined means i saw this video and he has very well explained everything starting from examination how to elicit various signs it was a, even a, a learning experience for me also so uh, in this patient uh, since this patient is neurologically not improving in spite of medications uh, and ct scan has shown uh, hydrocephalus with periventricular lucency which means patient has raised intracranial pressure so uh, first of all our aim is to reduce the pressure so uh, how to reduce the pressure there are various methods Uh, one is ventricular peritoneal shunt another is ex- uh, endoscopic third ventriculostomy and third is external drainage which may be by a reservoir which may be an otherwise a tube external ventricular drain so uh, hydrocephalus can occur the most commonest cause is the thick exudates which block the basal cisterns and obstruct the csa pathways so this can be a life threatening uh, problem and uh, what are various indications uh, when we should go for surgical intervention one of course is neurological deterioration which is the which is present in this case second is progressive visual loss and third is on imaging you are find increasing ventricular megaly with of course with periventricular lucency so in this patient uh, csf examination was done which has shown raised proteins low sugar and 90% lymphocytes with approximately 100 cells so in these type of the patients once you have uh, very high proteins the risk of shunt obstruction is very high so in these types of the patient 
and if patient particularly if they are sick and they are uh, the general condition is not good to buy time what we can do is we can do an external drainage of the csf which can be done by a simple putting a tube taken it out or we can put a reservoir inside the skin that remains inside the skin and with a needle puncture we can uh, remove the csf on as per the need even uh, previously we used to do repeated lumbar punctures uh, in these type of the patients if they are not fit for any intervention so we used to do repeated lumbar punctures to reduce the pressure so uh, mainly these two procedures uh, one is vp shunt that is the ventriculo peritoneal shunt which is the common uh, done we can put this uh, lower end in the pleura we can put the lower end Uh, in the atrium and nowadays uh, we are not doing it with ventricular atrial shunts but if there is some obstruction in the abdomen some adhesions in the abdomen with there may be secondary involvement of the uh, means secondary involvement of the abdomen means intestinal or peritoneal involvement there may be adhesions and we may not be able to put the shunt there so we can do ventriculo pleural shunt uh, few months back we did a ventriculo ureteric shunt because that patient has a diffuse involvement everywhere there were adhesions and we couldn't find only uh, ureter and from uh, csf was drained from the bladder so uh, ventricular peritoneal shunt and etv that is the endoscopic third ventriculostomy the both have the same kind of results if we see a long term uh, uh, outcome so uh, what we do uh, in a shunt is uh, that uh, we make a Uh, bar hole in the uh, posterior parietal or occipital region sometimes in the frontal region also and then we open the abdomen we make a tunnel in the subcutaneous plane and we pass a shunt tube one end goes into the ventricle and another end it floats into the abdominal cavity so uh, that is ventricular peritoneal shunt now we have got programmable shunt so normal shunts they have a fixed pressure they are defined as low pressure medium pressure and high pressure and most commonly used is medium pressure shunt and in india uh, the shunt which we commonly use is the chabra shunt which is the commonly used and then we have a programmable shunt programmable shunt is that we have a magnetic device and from outside once we put the shunt if there is over drainage we can increase the pressure if there is low drainage you can reduce the pressure so that is called programmable shunt so these uh, two types are fixed pressure shunts and programmable shunt as far as etv is concerned what we do this is at the done we make a fenestration at the floor of the third ventricle anterior to the mammillary borders so we make a hole and through that we drain the csf uh only contraindication sometimes for etv is that there may be a dense adhesions around those uh, mammillary bodies and we may not be able to uh, perforate the floor of the third ventricle so uh, these are the two procedures and if uh, we find a picture like this that very high proteins the risk of obstruction is there then we do uh, that uh, diversion procedure of ebd or a reservoir insertion uh various complications related to uh, vp shunt because everybody must have heard about this vp shunt because it is a commonly used procedure so uh, vp shunt is one is obstruction obstruction can be at the ventricular end at in the abdominal end then if we are putting any foreign body in the uh, system so risk of infection is there these complications they are approximately you can say 10 to 15% and uh, otherwise uh, other complications like shunt migration then uh, shunt uh, uh, breakage then so these various complications are there we have found shunt tube going through the stomach coming out of the nose going through the intestine coming out through the anus also in the hernial sac so in the scrotum so uh, these are the rare complications but still can occur so uh, once we talk of uh, this patient uh, uh, our plan is to put an ebd right now 
and uh, let the patient recover and once the patient recovers then we will plan either uh, VP shunt or endoscopic third ventriculostomy. As I said both have equal results and it depends on the person to person or the surgeon to choose which one is the best for the a particular patient. Anything else Dr. Gumbar? What, uh, uh, if patient is clinically deteriorating there's, uh, in this case, so we should go for CSF diversion because CS, uh, CT scan is showing evidence of raised pressure, clinically patient has got evidence of raised pressure, so we have to divert the CSF. So in this case we should not even wait for few days? No, because, because if patient is neurologically deteriorating, not improving, we should first do a uh, this is a small procedure, even we are doing at bedside also, a kind of uh, external drainage and uh, and usually what we have seen when I was with you in uh, UCMS also, so these type of the patients uh, we used to do EBDs and later on once the patient showed improvement and we converted it to shunts. Because something, uh, most of the procedures sometimes think that uh, maybe we can wait for uh, two weeks on steroids. Uh, because you see pediatricians are usually see, conservative. Yes. So we have to means uh, see the clinical grade of the patients. So what uh, well lower grading and otherwise if patient has a GCS of 15 and uh, even if there is ventriculomegaly we can start decongestant, we can turn steroids and observe. And one thing was there it, it, it has happened number of times that the child when the child was referred to us and we have started this child on ATT the uh, after few days the child starts as you mentioned earlier also the child starts losing vision so if the child starts losing vision in spite of the treatment we should not waste our time yes if ct scan is showing uh, raised pressure means uh, imaging is also showing the raised pressure and patient has symptoms okay. one vision and another i told you neurological deterioration we should go for diversion immediately i think uh, uh, this uh, small little talk will go in long way uh, for the postgraduate pediatricians because you see this is one part which is uh, weak of the postgraduates in pediatric medicine. So I must thank uh, Dr. Dua. He took out the time from his very busy schedule. I had to intrude into his office and uh, I had to say that I have to shoot today and uh, he kindly consented. I sincerely thank Dr. Dua uh, for giving us the uh, advice what to do about the surgical management. Thank you, Dr. Dhu. Okay.